So this is an illustration of the gauge on a sphygmomanometer or a blood pressure cuff. Because it's gonna be harder to read on the actual cuff itself, we're gonna use this drawing or this illustration over here to show you how to read the gauges so that you get your numbers accurate when you're taking someone's blood pressure. And the blood pressure is a measurement of the pressure of the blood flowing against the walls of the arteries. The arterial blood pressure is constantly changing during the course of the cardiac cycle. The highest pressure in the cycle is called the systolic blood pressure. That's the top number. The lowest is the diastolic blood pressure. That's the bottom number. Both readings are necessary to enable you to evaluate the status of your patient's blood pressure. And so in order for you to accurately obtain a blood pressure reading, you have to be able to read this gauge. If your gauge is calibrated, it's always going to start off here with as MMHG, that's millimeters of mercury, that's how much pressure. Um, and so we increase the pressure by actually squeezing on the bulb, and I'll show you that in a few moments. And so our machine is calibrated, is directly in the center at the bottom, which represents zero. Here we have a dark line, a long dark line, followed by four short lines, another long dark line, followed by four short lines, and then another dark line. This is how it reads. Everything's in increments of two. You cannot get an odd number when you're taking a manual blood pressure. If you're using an automated blood pressure cuff, then sometimes an odd number will be seen. But if you're using an earpiece, a stethoscope, and a um, manual blood pressure cuff or a speak manometer, you should not obtain um, odd readings. So here we go. 20. Small line above will be 22. Two small lines above 20, 24. 26, 28. Long line with no number would be 30. Let's keep it going. 32. 34, 36, 38, 40. And so now I want you to pretend as if we are inflating the bulb. We're pumping, 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 pumping. Our patient told us that their systolic blood pressure is normally 120. So we're just gonna take it 30 above to 150. Now that's the cheat way. When you're in nursing school, they may teach you a little bit differently, but I'm gonna show you the quickest way possible so that you'll learn fast. And then you can add those extra techniques when you're in nursing school. So you would actually inflate the pump to 150. And then you start Right, so we're gonna pump the cuff up to 150 and then we're going to gradually release the air valve. We're gonna turn it counterclockwise. We're gonna turn it back towards us. And the needle should drop about two millimeters of mercury per second. And so where you hear the first thump is going to be called the systolic pressure. And so here it is. Let's say we heard our first thump here. You're gonna to continue to release the air slowly. And wherever you hear the last thump and it gets really light, that would be our diastolic pressure. You remember where you actually heard your sounds. One line below this dark line would represent 128. And then one small line above this line, if this was 60, this would have to be 70. That would make it 72. So if you were writing this blood pressure down, you chart it as the blood pressure being 128 over 72. Now let's put it all together. We know how to read the gauge. Whenever we're practicing, I always ask that you practice without an arm in the cuff until you know what you're doing. And so I know your family members want to help you, but actually just have the, the cuff wrapped on itself. We talked about this bulb. We have the air valve here. We're going to tighten the air valve by turning it away from us, but don't tighten it so tightly to where you can't open it with two fingers. So you're going to close it. 
you'll know when it's closed because you won't be able to turn it any further. But again, don't make it so tight until you can't open it up with your two fingers. I like to keep two fingers on the air valve at all times. But here we go, we have it closed. And now we're gonna start inflating. And remember, when you're just starting off, my recommendation is that you don't use anyone's arm because you need to learn how to control this gauge. All right, so the needle's dropping a little bit. What I'm going to do is I just closed it tightly to stop it just for classroom purposes so I can show you what to do. I'm gonna put two fingers on the air valve and I'm gonna slowly move it towards me. I'm turning it very slowly and I'm letting the air release from the blood pressure cuff about two millimeters of mercury per second. And remember, if you were using your stethoscope, where you'd hear your first um, thump or your quarter cuff sound would be the systolic blood pressure. Where you hear the last quarter cuff sound would be the diastolic blood pressure. And once you hear no more sounds, you would release all of the air from your blood pressure cuff. Let's practice once more. What do I need to do to my air valve? I'm going to turn it away. I'm going to close it, but not make it so tight until I can't open it with my two fingers. Once it's closed, um, you can do the two step method where you feel the radial pulse until it no longer um, and inflate the cuff until you no longer feel any pulsations. And you can go 30 above that number, um, or you can just do the easy way I'm going to show you just inflate the cuff to about 150 if it's someone who does not have a history of hypertension. If they have a history of hypertension, you may have to go to 180 or 200. So here we go. And in nursing school, they'll teach you a different way. Right now, I'm just teaching you how to control your needle, release your air. And if you can control this needle, you can slow it down, you can speed it up. And remember, when you don't hear anything else, when you hear your last thump, you release all of the air out of the blood pressure cuff and then you remove it, take it off of your patient's arm. So this was our practice without a patient. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually take a blood pressure and use a stethoscope.